Hi, buddy. In this DeFi Focus via render video, we're going to take a look at lighting the interior of your scenes. Now, interior lighting with DeFi is not actually that difficult, but if you're just starting out, it might be helpful to have some tips and advice on how best to use the lights. We'll look at lighting a daytime scene, and then I'll just talk briefly about how to light up an evening or dusk scene, which is a little bit trickier, but still not too bad. This video is intended for people primarily new to D5 render, but if you're struggling with very flat interior renders, then hopefully this video will help you a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, buddy, so here we are with our D5 scene. This is a Scandinavian-inspired environment we built in SketchUp. That's just a pretty much a large living room, which if you've done sort of interior renderings for clients, you've probably shown off a living room once or twice. So this is what we're talking about here. We've gone for a snowy environment outside, and the reason for this is really simple. We just don't want to risk any... For example, if you have a lot of greens or a lot of foliage out there, that's going to bleed into the scene, and that's not really what we want. So we've got a very neutral white environment, and if we look at our environment light, we're using an overcast pure sky, it's a 16K image, and it's just very, very neutral lighting. It's not full white, but it is very neutral lighting. And we've set this pretty low. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is exposure. You can work with the auto exposure on, that's perfectly fine. It'll help when you go inside and outside and inside your buildings. But when it comes to actually setting up the renders, you want to have control over the exposure, the overall brightness of the image or how much light is coming into the camera lens. So you can see I've turned it off and we've put the exposure at 0 0.2. So this is just neutral. So scene two up here at the left has basically got no lights turned on. So with that being said, let's bounce into the first light type, and that is going to be a rectangle light. Now, all your lights will be up here on the top. You can use the keyboard shortcuts as well, one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to use a rectangle light. Now, a rectangle light, uh, very similar to the twin motion area lights, it's basically just a flat rectangle. There's no depth. And if we look over here, we've got options here for the intensity, the attenuation, and the overall just the color temperature of that light itself. So how do we use these? Well, because we've turned off auto exposure, the image is rather unsurprisingly brighter outside than it is inside. And what we need is some light coming in from the outside. And what we can do, one easy way to do this is to grab your area lights or rectangle lights. And I'm going to change the color to red just so you can see this. I'll lift it up. And then what we'll do is rotate it. So we're rotating it, so not, what is that, like 45 degrees or whatever. I'll lift this guy up. And then I'm going to hold down shift and make a duplicate of this. And then I'm going to rotate this guy upwards. So what we have now is two of these rectangle lights. One is pointing downwards, one is pointing upwards. Um, we just place these outside the actual building. So let's move myself back over here. And let's take a look at the actual lights that we have outside. So I did two rounds of this, and if we pop out here, there we go. You can see what we have going on. So these are rectangle lights. They've been made bigger. They've been made about as wide as the actual windows themselves, and I've crashed them almost right into the building. So this is, I believe, referred to as the uh, light wash technique. Um, I did not come up with this, by the way. Um, not at all. This is just a great technique. And so what we have here is light coming in, and you can see the direction with the blue lines. Because light is coming down like this, we're going to get some really nice shadows in and around the furniture. And also because light is coming up this way, you'll actually see a bit more light in the actual room. You won't get these really dark shadows up on the ceiling area. So basically, it's going to be more evenly lit. In addition, we've taken the attenuation radius, so basically how far this light actually travels, and we've cranked it all the way up. And we've left the attenuation intensity at 1. So you can kind of see here, as you adjust the attenuation intensity, you're going to get a little bit more fall off. But I'm just happy. I just want completely just flat light. So this is going to be something like that. There we go. So attenuation intensity at 0. This is adding a huge amount of light sort of into the scene. And that's where you're going to have to come in and adjust the actual intensity or the strength of the light. And you can play with the intensity and the attenuation intensity to get the result that you're going for. So let's go ahead and take a look at scene one. 
and you can see scene one so this is scene two no lights scene one has got those airy lights and you can see they're blasting light into the room so this is going to mimic more like outside light coming through a window it's not enough to light your scene entirely with this but it will certainly help brighten the scene without having to for example go up here and tweak the exposure too much now the second type of light that we're going to look at is going to be the spotlight so here you can see uh, I'll just run through these really quickly. A point light we'll get to in a second. Spotlight is going to be light that basically comes down in a comb. Now you can add IES light profiles if you want to like affect the shape of that sort of cone, but generally you don't necessarily have to. IES light profiles are cool, but they're not like essential to anything. So in order to add our spotlight, and just go up here or hit two on the keyboard, and I placed one spotlight here and one here. So if you're going to have effectively like ceiling lighting, whether it's, you know, drop lighting or some sort of pendant style lighting, but mostly just the primary light within a room, that's when you're going to use these spotlights. They will shoot light down in this cone. And as you can see here, select this little fellow. We don't have any IES on. We've got relatively 100 intensity. That's under LM. So either of these sliders will work, but some people just prefer, but they're effective with this. They're going to give you the same result. Moving one will move the other. So I'm just going to use the lumen one and intensity of 100. The cone angle is just going to determine sort of where the kind of fall off ends, right? So basically, like, how wide is this shot going to be? And what we really want with this is to get shadows on the objects underneath. So if, if these are kind of turned off, right, if we just go over here and we turn off lights, look at the shadows under the couch. You can kind of see... It becomes very wishy-washy, a little bit vague. And the the kind of like the objects don't necessarily feel like they're they're stuck on the ground. They just kind of feel like they're there, right? And so adding these spotlights, looking at those shadows, it's much sharper, much better looking shadows. And also, if you're gonna be doing an interior shot like like this, the lights are probably going to be go be turned on. You could try and do this without the spotlights, but this will give you just better contact shadows, better global illumination. And I think that will help quite a lot. It just sort of makes all the objects feel like they're on an actual surface. So spotlights are your friend. Now, the other thing we can do is what are called point lights. This is number one on the keyboard. Point light is just a impossible sort of circular light. We change this fellow to red here. You can see exactly kind of the fall off. Yeah, there we go. So attenuation radius is how far that light was actually going to travel. And then the light source radius just determines, are you going to see basically a halo of light in reflection? So we turn that off. Intensity is exactly what it sounds like. You can crank this up or down, wherever you want. And you could put an IF's light profile, but I don't really see why with these type of lights. So where are these point lights useful? There are two real use cases. One is going to be something like this, where we have a fireplace with what looks like flame on the inside so if you're doing fire it's just a still image like this not a video image of fire flickering you can get away with this i've made the objects just uh slightly more emissive just selected it with the eyedropper and turned on the emissive intensity very low and then we've placed three of these effectively point lights these singular point lights uh point lights is it's very similar to just an omni light right it's the same idea if you're coming from like 3d studio max or whatever like, a, an omni light is just an, an impossible, magical, circular light. So, point lights are omni lights. Very good for putting them in an area like this. Dropping the attenuation radius. And I've made visible and reflections on, just so you can kind of see. If you look here, if we turn that off, it, it might sort of affect a little bit of the reflections on the table. But you'll have to make a decision on that each time you use them. Do you want it visible in the shot or not? Generally, you probably won't. Now... Light source radius, attenuation radius, these are all set pretty low. And then the key here is to change the color. So what we have is three very sort of weak uh, point lights or omni lights, very low attenuation, but a very warm color. So you're getting a little bit of this warmth spilling out. Now, I found it better to work with three of these and each one set to slightly different intensity. They're not as evenly strong. I kind of feel like if you just put one in there, it would be sort of an unrealistic looking result. Because really you do have multiple light sources within the actual flame itself. And not all parts of the fire are 
equally as hot or as warm color wise uh, at the same time. And so you get a better result with multiple on these. Now, one more light type we do want to look at really quickly or use case. So in here for the lamps, by the way, if you're working on an interior scene and the image is looking a little cold, maybe it's literally cold because the environment is more blue or just the overall scene is just lacking in warmth. Best thing you can do, just put a lamp in there and you can see over here, we've got these warm lamps. We've actually got two of them going on. And let's take a look. So what these are again is just another point light. So again, just an omni, an impossible sort of like omni light. And this little guy is just going to be basically pointing downwards. And in order to do that, we have put an IES light profile. And you can see these guys over here. Now in D5, I think it's 2.11 you can actually see this yellow cone shape, which is sort of depicting the shape of the IES light profile, uh, really very handy to work with. So we've got one pointing downwards, it's set to very warm, and we've got the light source radius. None of these are gonna matter that much because it's being occluded by the lampshade here, but the IES light profile will give you a specific sort of fall off shape. Now, all we did then was add another one, rotate it 180 degrees, and lift it up because realistically like you, you'll have light will be coming out of the bottom of the lamp but it will also be coming out of the top of the lamp as well and so yeah you could probably just put one of these spotlights in there and then blah 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 but like i find there's a really nice result you can get by putting two and they just have slightly different settings slightly different attenuation radius and slightly different intensities so the bottom one is much stronger than the top one and you can see over here as well Pretty much the same effect going on. This lamp is a little bit bigger, so there should be more light will be coming out of this guy. But again, we have one down the bottom and another one at the top. <clears throat> now, I did mention this there when I talked about these. There are two light use cases for these point lights. Technically, I'm wrong, there's three. So we've got fireplaces, lamps, and in a minute when we look at how to do an evening shot, we'll use these point lights to add more light into the scene. So let's take a quick look here. We've got scene two. Just These are all the lights off. There's just nothing going on. We haven't made any other changes in the environment except to reduce the auto exposure. And then scene one again with all the lights in there. And I think you'll find that is just a more visually appealing image. It's just a better looking image. Now, if you do need areas in your scene where you need extra light, you can in D5 Render also use just an emissive light. So apply a standard material and just go to the emissive color and turn it on. You can see the back wall here is being lit up. Now it's not advisable to render the entire scene in D5 using emissive materials. You can under limited circumstances. We did a video on it about two years ago. And the results can be super, super cool. But generally for a shot like this, and you don't want to do that. So we mentioned there's a third use of the point lights. And so if you're doing an evening render in D5, and I strongly recommend that if you're doing an evening shot, please make it, you know, dusk, make it at the end of the day. True nighttime shots are really problematic and, and they're tricky even with D5. So I would say don't do those, but you can definitely make it like dusky and dark outside. And a lot of that will depend on the HRI that you choose. We're using one of the ones, uh, HRI skies from Polyhaven here. And I've just kind of rotated this guy so the hot spot, the brightest part of the image is away. And I've also made sure that the background and the actual skylight itself is quite weak. So it's dark out there, but it's not pitch black. And, and that's actually what you kind of want to avoid. And so in this lighting situation, the warm lights are all going to read quite nicely. The lamps are still looking good. The spotlights up here are still giving us those lovely shadows. Now you could, if you want, I've taken these a little bit more color-wise, a little bit more orange. Generally ceiling lights in homes, the lighting tends to lean, I believe, more on the orange than it does on the blue. And so you can see we've got a little bit more. I moved this just a tiny dash a little bit on the left. Now the third use for these point lights is going to be fill lights. So if we go to scene three here, and you can see, I've added 
two more point lights. I've hit Control G to group them. So if I make changes to one, it'll manifest in the other as well. And then the main thing is adjusting the intensity. Now I've turned off show light shape. I've turned off visible and reflections. So now what these are, they're really just these sort of magic lights that are just going to be adding light to the scene. So they don't really exist in reality, but that's okay. And so we can take the intensity up ever so gently here and slowly start bringing back some warmth into our actual scene. Now, nighttime renders like this will probably require a bit more post-processing. You'll have to go over the effects tab and again, start getting in there. And there's no magic number for this. You just need to tweak the exposure. And really to sell this, the outside just needs to be much darker than what's going on inside. And so you can come in here and adjust the highlight local exposure, kind of tweaking these, and adjust the shadow local exposure. But generally speaking, you still want some interesting shadows. You know, nighttime, you'll have less ambient bounce light. So I think those shadows should read a little bit, you know, darker. But overall, to me, this is really fine. This will work just perfectly fine when you're doing sort of these dusk evening renders. One last thing before I leave it there. I'm going to go back to scene one. I'm going to delete my light fills, and I want to show you this. In D5 2.11, the path tracer is now the default rendering engine. But if you want to see the old engine, you can come up here and go to the triple dots, preference, and go down to render and look at this legacy G D5 GI compatibility mode. And I'm going to turn this off. And look at that. Those shadows just look better. So going forward, this is going to be there for a while. I think they'll get rid of it within the next release or two, according to what they've said online. But generally speaking, you want to make sure that the legacy mode is not on because you can really see the difference in the shadows. Now, it'll also make a difference in the reflections and things like that. But generally speaking, yeah, you don't want the legacy mode. You do want the new D5 path tracing render engine because it does absolutely stunning work. And with that, we are done. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you found it useful in setting up your D5 interior lighting environments. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video really soon. All right, cheers.